Hi everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to be adding an extremely powerful convergence test to our library, the ratio test. This test is awesome. It allows us to test the convergence of very complicated looking series, particularly series that involve factorial terms, and it's the key tool that we'll be using to analyze the convergence of power series, something we'll be talking about very shortly. Our motivation for the ratio test actually comes from geometric series. If you have a geometric series with terms a n given by a r to the n, well we can fully understand the convergence of this series if we know the value of r. r here is the common ratio. If you take any term a n plus 1 and divide it by the previous term a n, everything cancels out and you're just left with this constant r. Now if this r in absolute value is greater than or equal to 1, your series diverges. If it's less than 1 in absolute value, your series will converge. And in fact, it converges absolutely. The signs of your terms don't matter, it's just the absolute value of this ratio. So for a geometric series, we can state the following equivalence. The series will converge absolutely if and only if the ratio of consecutive terms in absolute value is less than 1. The idea behind the ratio test is that we want to extend this connection to series that might not be geometric. We can't expect it to carry over exactly, because after all, this ratio for a non-geometric series won't even be a constant, it will depend on n, but we can still ask the question, how does this ratio behave in the long run when n goes off to infinity? Is it approaching something bigger than 1? In that case, maybe it makes sense that our series diverges. After all, the series is behaving in a way that's comparable to a divergent geometric series. If instead it's converging to something less than 1, maybe it makes sense that our series converges absolutely, because it's behaving in a way that's comparable to a convergent geometric series. Finally, if it's tending to exactly 1, well, there it's actually a little bit difficult to say. It will depend on how the limit's approaching 1, and we actually won't be able to draw any conclusions. So let's summarize these ideas by stating the ratio test on the next slide, and then we'll jump into some examples. Okay, here it is folks, the ratio test, one of my favorite tests in our roster. Suppose we wish to analyze the convergence of a series with terms a n. What we're going to do is look at this ratio, a n plus 1 over a n in absolute value, and we're going to see how this ratio behaves in the long run when n goes off to infinity. So we'll let L denote the value of that limit, and we'll assume that the limit exists. We'll also include the possibility that that limit is infinity. We now have three possible scenarios. First, if L is converging to something less than 1, well then in the long run our terms are sort of behaving in a way that's comparable to a convergent geometric series. In that case, maybe it's believable that the series is absolutely convergent. If instead L is bigger than 1, then in the long run, our terms are behaving in a way that's comparable to a divergent geometric series. It makes sense then that our series diverges. Finally, if L is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. The series could converge absolutely, it could converge conditionally, or it could diverge. We can't make any conclusions using the ratio test alone. With that said, we're now ready to jump into some examples. Okay, for our first example, I'd like to examine this nasty looking series. The sum from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1, n to the 5 divided by 5 to the n. Does this converge absolutely, converge conditionally, or diverge? Well now in problems like this, when we want to distinguish between absolute and conditional convergence, it makes sense to go all in and first check for absolute convergence. The reason why is that if you find that the series converges absolutely, you're done. You don't have to do any more tests. If instead you apply, say, the alternating series test and find that this series converges, well then you're still not done. Is it conditional convergence or absolute? You'd still have to apply further tests. So we're going to go all in and test for absolute convergence from the start. Right now we know of two ways to do this. Your first option would be to take the absolute value of the terms and then use one of our other tests. Your second option, which is maybe a little bit more streamlined, would be to apply the ratio test directly. Remember from the last slide, absolute convergence is one of the conclusions of the ratio test. It's built into the test itself. So let's go ahead and give the ratio test a try. We'll use the ratio test. 
To use the ratio test, what do we have to do again? Oh yeah, we have to look at the ratio of consecutive terms, a n plus 1 divided by a n, in absolute value. And we have to take the limit of that expression as n goes off to infinity. So in this case, we have to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of, okay, our n plus first term, that's going to be minus 1 to the n plus 2, n plus 1 to the 5, divided by 5 to the n plus 1, divided by the nth term, minus 1 to the n plus 1, n to the 5, over 5 to the n. Okay, don't be intimidated. This looks really scary, but things are going to clean up so, so nicely. We'll start by getting rid of those minus 1 to the n terms. After all, we're taking the absolute value, so those disappear. Next, I can simplify things by flipping up this bottom fraction and changing it to multiplication. Since everything inside is positive, I can also ignore these absolute value bars. What I get is the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1 to the 5 times 5 to the n divided by n to the 5 times 5 to the n plus 1. Okay, again, you can see that some simplification will occur. We have 5 to the n divided by 5 to the n plus 1. That's just one-fifth. I can also group these two terms together because they're both raised to the power of 5. I have the limit as n tends to infinity of one-fifth of n plus 1 over n to the power of 5. Well, check it out. The stuff in the brackets is going to tend to 1. So my final answer is one-fifth. That's less than 1, right? So according to my ratio test, my series converges absolutely. And there you go, your first application of the ratio test. Notice that this term 5 to the n really simplified nicely in our ratio calculation. The ratio test in general does well with a constant raised to the power of n. So if you see something like this, it might be a good indicator that the ratio test would work well. In the next example, you'll see another such indicator. Okay, for our second example, I'd like to decide whether this series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n factorial over e to the n, converges or diverges. Oh, well just look at this thing. n factorial over e to the n? Which of my tests could handle something like this? Well, I'll tell you what test, the ratio test. Most tests would be scared off by a factorial, but the ratio test eats those terms for breakfast. If you see a factorial in your series, it's almost guaranteed that the ratio test will be the right choice. So in this case, we'll try the ratio test. Just like before, we have to compute the limit as n tends to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n in absolute value. Now I'm going to ignore the absolute value bars here because everything in sight is positive. I have the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1 factorial over e to the n plus 1 divided by n factorial over e to the n. Just like in the last example, I'm going to flip this bottom fraction up and simplify it. And you'll see just how well the ratio test handles this factorial term. We end up with the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1 factorial e to the n divided by n factorial e to the n plus 1. The e to the n over e to the n plus 1 simplifies to 1 over e and the n plus 1 factorial over n factorial simplifies to n plus 1. We have the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1 over e, which is infinity. Okay, well infinity is bigger than 1, right? So according to my ratio test, my series diverges. Pretty nice, huh? To end this video, I'm going to leave you with the following exercise. For each of the three series below, Compute the limit from the ratio test and show that the value is equal to 1. Notice, however, that the series behave very differently. In my first case, I have a convergent p-series with only positive terms. It's therefore absolutely convergent. In the second case, I have the alternating harmonic series, which we've seen converges conditionally. Finally, we have the harmonic series, which doesn't converge at all. It's divergent. This exercise shows that you can't draw any conclusions when your ratio test gives you a limit of 1. Your series could converge absolutely, conditionally, or it could diverge. We'd have to apply further tests to get more information.